via your computer speakers. All participant lines are muted. Note the engagement icons on the left side of your screen. A copy of today's presentation is available in the handout section. To ask a question, enter it in the Q&A. Welcome to today's webinar titled Beneficial Ownership Information Reporting under the Corporate Transparency Act that's taking place Thursday, January 26, 2023. I'm Aisha Stewart and I will be your moderator. Please note that, the quest that questions could be submitted using the Q&A box that is located towards the middle left side of your screen and someone from the team will follow up after the webinar. Also, following today's webinar, there will be a few survey questions that I will be sharing with you. In addition, a link to the recording will be sent out in a post-event communication email. Now, I would like to introduce today's presenter, Sandy Feldman, Publications Attorney for CT. It is now my pleasure to hand it over to Sandy. Welcome, Sandy. Well, thank you, and welcome to our webinar on the Corporate Transparency Act and the beneficial ownership information reporting requirement that small businesses will have to comply with beginning next year. My name is Sandy Feldman, and I am the publications attorney for CT Corporation. And in that role, I write and talk about the compliance requirements that business entities are subject to. And for the most part, that means I'm writing or talking about what's required by the state LLC and corporation laws. And it's fairly unusual for me to be doing what I'm doing today, which is talking about federal law. That's because for the most part, throughout our nation's history, Congress has left it to the states to govern their business entities and decide what information needs to be reported. And to my memory, and I've been monitoring compliance requirements for over 30 years, until the Corporate Transparency Act, Congress had never imposed a reporting requirement on business entities based solely on the fact that they were created under state law. But that's what the Corporate Transparency Act does. It requires a beneficial ownership information report to be filed, regardless of what activities the reporting company engages in, and regardless of whether it transacts any business in interstate commerce. And that's why, when reporting begins next year, an estimated 32.6 million LLCs, corporations, and other entities will be required to file a report, with an additional 5 million having to file each year thereafter. So, over the next 30 minutes, we will discuss exactly what beneficial ownership information reporting under the Corporate Transparency Act looks like. Here's our agenda. I'll begin by providing some background. Then we'll discuss the role of the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network that are known as FinCEN, which is the federal agency that wrote the final rule implementing the reporting requirement, and which is the agency with which you will file your report. Then we'll dive into what the final rule says. We'll discuss who has to file a beneficial ownership information or BOI report and what information has to be reported. Then I'll describe who is a beneficial owner and who is a company applicant. Next, we'll discuss when the initial BOI report has to be filed and when it has to be updated or corrected. Then I'll tell you about something called the FinCEN identifier. We'll go over the penalties for violating the law and finally, we'll discuss some of the things you might want to start doing this year to prepare for the reporting that will begin next year. Lots to unpack, so let's dive in. I'd like to begin by giving you some background. So what is the Corporate Transparency Act, or CTA? It's a federal law enacted by Congress on January 1st, 2021. And technically speaking, it amends another federal law called the Bank Secrecy Act. And basically, what the CTA says is that every domestic and foreign LLC, corporation, and other entity that meets the definition of a reporting company has to file a report with FinCEN identifying and providing personally identifiable information about all of the company's beneficial owners and applicants. And FinCEN is directed to collect and maintain that information in a private database. And FinCEN is authorized to disclose that information upon request only to a limited group of requesters, including federal agencies engaged in national security, intelligence, or law enforcement, state or local law enforcement with a court order, and financial institutions with the company's consent, so the financial institutions can comply with their due diligence obligations under the Bank Secrecy Act. And although the text of the CTA may not say this, 
we consider this to be a reporting obligation imposed on small businesses. Because when you look at the definition of a reporting company, which we will do in a minute, you'll see that it is mainly small businesses that will have to file a VOI report. And of course, most businesses in the United States are small businesses. And we'll spend most of our time discussing what has to be filed, when it has to be filed, and who has to file it. But I think it's also important to understand why this filing is required. Why did Congress enact this law? What is Congress trying to accomplish? And in the CTA, Congress says the following. It is the sense of Congress that more than 2 million corporations and LLCs are formed in the United States each year. The states where they are formed do not require information about their beneficial owners. Malign actors conceal their ownership of these entities to facilitate money laundering, financing of terrorism, tax fraud, and other illicit activities. Federal legislation providing for the collection of beneficial ownership information is needed to protect vital national security interests and better enable national security, intelligence, and law enforcement agency efforts to counter money laundering and other illicit activity. And that's what Congress says in a slightly edited form. So what we have in the CTA is a law intended to help identify bad people who are using business entities to commit financial crimes in the United States. And according to Congress, having statutory entities file a beneficial ownership information report will help accomplish that goal. Okay, what is the role of FinCEN? It's not unusual that when Congress passes a law, the statute itself will provide a basic framework of what has to be done to comply. And Congress will direct a federal agency to provide all the material details through its rulemaking. And in the case of the CTA, that agency is FinCEN, which is part of the Department of Treasury. And in the CTA, Congress directs FinCEN to issue a final rule implementing the reporting requirement. And the CTA says that reporting will begin on the effective date of that final rule. And FinCEN issued the final rule implementing the reporting requirement on September 29, 2022. And that final rule has an effective date of January 1st, 2024, meaning that the reporting requirement goes into effect on January 1st, 2024. And FinCEN still has two more final rules that it's required by the CTA to write. One on who has access to the reported information. And FinCEN issued a proposed rule on that last month. And the other amending the customer due diligence rule that is imposed on financial institutions by the Bank Secrecy Act. FinCEN is also responsible for drafting the forms that will be used to report this information, which will have to be submitted electronically. And they published their proposed BOI report and FinCEN identifier application forms for public comment just last week. But our focus today is on FinCEN's final rule implementing the reporting requirement. So what does the final reporting rule say? Let's start with who has to file a beneficial ownership information report. BOI reports have to be filed by domestic reporting companies and foreign reporting companies. A domestic reporting company is defined as an entity that is a corporation, LLC, or other entity created by the filing of a document with the Secretary of State or similar office under the laws of a state or Indian tribe. A foreign reporting company is an entity that is a corporation, LLC, or other entity created under the law of a foreign country and registered to do business in any state or tribal jurisdiction by filing a document with the Secretary of State or similar office under the law of a state or Indian tribe. I'm going to assume that most of the small business owners attending this webinar are interested in the requirements for domestic reporting companies created under state law. So that's what I'll be referring to. But if you have an interest in an LLC, corporation, or other entity created outside of the United States or registered here, or created by a filing in a tribal jurisdiction, know that this applies to that company too. Now, we know that corporations and LLCs are included in the definition of reporting companies, but what other entities are included. The final rule does not list what other entities would be considered a reporting company. However, FinCEN has indicated that it expects that this would include limited liability partnerships, 
limited liability, limited partnerships, business trusts, statutory trusts, and most limited partnerships because they are created by filing a document with a state. And FinCEN has also indicated that it expects that sole proprietorships, general partnerships, and most trusts would not be considered reporting companies because they are not created by the filing of a document with the state. The final rule sets forth 23 exemptions. If your corporation, LLC, or other entity qualifies for an exemption, it is not a reporting company and does not have to file a report. And the exemptions are mainly for larger, more heavily regulated companies. And those exemptions include, among others, the following. An issuer of securities registered under Section 12 of the Securities Exchange Act are required to file reports with the SEC under Section 15 of the Securities Exchange Act. Banks, credit unions, securities brokers or dealers, any other entity that registers with the Securities and Exchange Commission or is registered under the Commodity Exchange Act, investment companies and advisors, insurance companies, state licensed insurance producers, public accounting firms, pooled investment vehicles, tax exempt entities, large operating companies, subsidiaries of certain exempt entities, and inactive entities. There's one of those exemptions that I want to discuss in more detail, and that's the large operating company. So what is a large operating company? It is an entity that A, employs more than 20 full-time employees in the United States, B, has an operating presence at a physical office within the United States, and C, filed a federal income tax or information return in the United States for the previous year, demonstrating more than $5 million in gross receipts or sales as reported on the entity's IRS Form 1120, Form 1065, or other applicable IRS form, excluding gross receipts or sales from sources outside of the United States. So if your company has A, B, and C, it is exempt. So that's who has to file a beneficial ownership information report. Now let's see what information has to be reported by a reporting company. All reporting companies have to provide information in their initial reports about the company and provide personally identifiable information about all of their beneficial owners. Reporting companies created on or after January 1st, 2024 also have to provide personal information about their company applicants. <laughs> and the reporting company will have to certify that the information it reports is true, correct, and complete. Regarding the reporting company, the initial report has to provide five pieces of information. The full legal name of the company, which is the name under which it was created, any trade or DBA names, whether registered or not, a complete current street address of its principal place of business in the United States, its state of formation, and its IRS taxpayer identification number. For each individual beneficial owner, the initial report must set forth four pieces of information. The full legal name of the individual, the date of birth, the current residential street address, and a unique identifying number and the issuing jurisdiction from one of the following non-expired documents. A U.S. passport, an identification document issued by a state, local, or tribal government for the purpose of identifying the individual, a driver's license, or if the individual doesn't have any of those documents, a foreign passport. The report also has to include an image of the document from which the unique identifying number was obtained. All reporting companies created on or after January 1st, 2024 also have to include in their initial report the same personal information for their individual company applicant or applicants, with one exception. In the case of a company applicant who creates an entity in the course of the applicant's business, you have to set forth the applicant's business address instead of their residential address. Okay. Who is a beneficial owner? Beneficial owner is defined in the final rule as any individual who directly or indirectly either exercises substantial control over a reporting company or owns or controls at least 
of the ownership interests. And FinCEN says that every reporting company will have at least one beneficial owner, because even if there's no individual who owns 25%, there will always be an individual who has substantial control. The rule also gives us a definition of substantial control. And according to FinCEN, the goal is to identify the key individuals who stand behind the company and direct its actions. And the rule says that an individual exercises substantial control if the individual serves as a senior officer or has authority to remove senior officers or a majority of the board of directors or similar body or directs, determines, or has substantial influence over important decisions made by the reporting company, or, and here's a catch-all, has any other form of substantial control over the reporting company. And the rule defines a senior officer as any individual holding the position, exercising the authority, or performing the functions of a president, chief financial officer, general counsel, chief executive officer, or chief operating officer. The rule also gives us examples of what is considered an important decision that if someone directs, determines, or has substantial influence over would be an indicator of substantial control. It includes decisions regarding the sale, lease, or mortgage of principal assets, the reorganization, dissolution, or merger of the company, major expenditures or investments, decisions regarding the selection or termination of business lines and ventures, the compensation programs for senior officers, entering into or terminating significant contracts, or amending substantial governance documents. We also have a definition of ownership interest, and it includes any equity, stock, or similar instrument, capital or profits interest, convertible instruments, puts, calls, straddles, and other options, and we have another catch-all. Any other instrument, contract, arrangement, understanding, relationship, or mechanism used to establish ownership. So when you take into account the specific examples, the catch-alls, and the fact that beneficial ownership can be direct or indirect, I think you can see the definition of beneficial owner is very broad. There are, however, five exceptions. The term beneficial owner does not include a minor child. However, the reporting company has to provide the required information of the parent or legal guardian, an individual acting as a nominee, intermediary, custodian, or agent on behalf of another individual, an individual whose only interest in the reporting company is a future interest through a right of inheritance, an employee of the reporting company acting solely as an employee, provided, however, that the individual is not a senior officer and a creditor of the reporting company. So that's the beneficial owner. Next up, who is a company applicant? And the final rule defines a company applicant of a domestic reporting company as the individual who directly files the document that creates the domestic reporting company and the individual who is primarily responsible for directing or controlling such filing if more than one individual is involved in the filing of the document. So a reporting company may have one company applicant or it may have two company applicants, but never more than two. And remember, company applicant information only has to be reported by entities created on or after January 1st, 2024. Okay, we've covered who has to file report and what information has to be reported. Now let's look at when the initial BOI report has to be filed. As I've mentioned, reporting begins January 1st, 2024. Domestic reporting companies created before January 1st, 2024 have one year from January 1st, 2024 to file their initial report. So you can file at any time on or after January 1st, 2024 and on or before January 1st, 2025. Domestic reporting companies created on or after January 1st, 2024 are required to file their initial BOI report within 30 calendar days of the earlier of the date on which they receive actual notice that the creation of their company is effective or the date on which a secretary of state or similar office first provides public notice that the company has been created. And an entity that had been exempt 
but that no longer qualifies for an exemption, has to file its initial report within 30 calendar days after the date it no longer qualifies for an exemption. Okay, updated reports. If there is a change in the information required to be reported concerning the reporting company or the beneficial owners, the reporting company must file an updated report within 30 calendar days after the date the change occurs. That would include, for example, a change in respect to who is a beneficial owner or the information reported for any beneficial owners. It would also include if the reporting company, after it files its initial report, meets the criteria for an exemption. That's considered a change and an updated report would be filed notifying FinCEN that it is now exempt. And information reported with respect to the company applicant, which as we mentioned is only reported by companies created on or after January 1st, 2024, does not have to be updated by the reporting company. Corrected reports. If any report contained inaccurate information about the reporting company, beneficial owners, or company applicant when the report was filed, the reporting company has to file a corrected report within 30 calendar days after the date the company becomes aware of or has reason to know of the inaccuracy. So this isn't a change in information since the report was filed, which would be an update. This is correcting an error in the information reported. What is a FinCEN identifier? A beneficial owner or company applicant has the option of submitting to FinCEN an application containing the personal information that is required to be reported, and FinCEN will give that individual a number specific to that individual called a FinCEN identifier. And that individual, rather than giving their personal information to each reporting company for which they are a beneficial owner or company applicant, can give the reporting company the FinCEN identifier, and the reporting company can include that number in its BOR report instead of setting forth each piece of personal information. A reporting company can also obtain a FinCEN identifier. Its request for one has to be made at the same time it files its initial report or after it files its initial report, but not before filing its initial report. And a beneficial owner company applicant or reporting company that obtains a FinCEN identifier is required to update FinCEN within 30 calendar days of a change in the reported information or correct the information with FinCEN within 30 calendar days if it was inaccurate on the application. Penalties. Where you have compliance requirements, you have penalties for failures to comply. Now let's talk about the penalties for violating the reporting obligations of the CTA. First, what constitutes a violation? The rule says it is unlawful for any person to willfully provide or attempt to provide false or fraudulent beneficial ownership information to FinCEN or to willfully fail to report complete or updated beneficial ownership information to FinCEN. The term person includes any individual reporting company, or other entity. The rule also says a person fails to report complete or updated beneficial ownership information if the entity was required to report information, failed to do so, and the person either caused the failure or is a senior officer of the entity at the time of the failure. For the penalties, we have to go back to the CTA, which says that a person who violates the statute shall be liable for a civil penalty of not more than $500 per day, the violation continues, and may be fined not more than $10,000, imprisoned for not more than two years, or both. Now let's talk about preparing for 2024. Although reporting does not begin until next year, there are some things business owners, managers, and anyone else responsible for a company's compliance should start doing this year. First, if you have an entity that exists now, you should determine if it is a reporting company. If so, you should develop the policies and procedures to ensure you comply with the CTA. You need to identify all of your beneficial owners, and the beneficial owners need to be made aware of the requirements of the CTA and that their personal information will have to be reported to FinCEN and kept up to date. 
you should tell them that they can provide the initial and updated information directly to the company or directly to FinCEN by obtaining a FinCEN identifier. You can also start gathering the information that has to be reported and develop a procedure to keep track of all this information to make sure it's current when you file your initial report and that you're aware of any changes that will require you to file an updated report. You can also decide when you want to file your initial report. Do you want to get it out of the way early or wait until closer to the deadline? You can also decide whether you want your company to request a FinCEN identifier when it files its initial report. And for anyone intending on creating a new reporting company in the future, maybe you have a new business venture in mind, you can decide whether to create that entity before January 1st, 2024 or not. And keep in mind, if you create a reporting company in 2024 and beyond, you only have about 30 days after creation to file your report and you'll need the information from your company applicant. And something else you can do, if you would like to contact FinCEN about the CTA, they have a call center and an email address where people can do so. And the phone number of the FinCEN regulatory support section is 1-800-767-2825. And you can email them at frc at fincen.gov. Let's sum up what we discussed today. We examined the Corporate Transparency Act, which is a federal law intended to combat money laundering and other illicit activities by requiring entities to file a beneficial ownership information report with the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network with access to the information limited mainly to law enforcement officials. We looked at who has to file a report, what information has to be reported, when the initial report is due, and when an update or correction might have to be filed. We discussed the FinCEN identifier, looked at the penalties for non-compliance, and discussed what you can do this year to prepare. I'd like to thank everyone for attending, and I hope we provided you with useful information. And now I'm going to hand you back to Aisha. Thank you, Sandy. Now, before we conclude, I would like to get started with a few survey questions that we have. The first, would you like to receive updates about this topic and other compliance news in our monthly CT Newswire newsletter? Again, would you like to receive updates about this topic and other compliance news in our monthly CT Newswire newsletter? Okay, we're going to move on to the next question. Please rate the value of today's webinar content on a scale from one to five, where five is the highest and one is the lowest. And I'll read that over again. Please rate the value of today's webinar content on a scale from one to five, where five is the highest and one is the lowest. And we will move along to the third question. Please rate today's presenter on a scale of one to five, where five is the highest and one is the lowest. Again, that is, please rate today's presenter, presenter on a scale of one to five, where five is the highest and one is the lowest. And moving on to our final evaluation que survey question. Please rate today's written materials on a scale of one to five, where five is the highest and one is the lowest. And I'll read it again. Please rate today's written materials on a scale of one to five, where five is the highest and one is the lowest. Okay. 
Thank you for attending today's webinar. This does conclude today's webinar. Have a great day.